Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be, as you can tell by the title of this video and the slide I am in right now, the preliminary winter forecast, part two or number two. So uh, this has been highly requested by many, so I decided to do so. <clears throat> and hopefully you will enjoy this. There has been uh, some tweaks, though not too major. I mean, I'm still confident that uh, what I was confident on before, uh, you know, similar stuff, I'm not really, you know, I'm not really, uh, didn't change anything too significant, but, uh, generally I have the same thoughts, and I do think that the similar things, uh, sorry about that, will be in, uh, in play, so consider subscribing to this channel, consider liking this video, it really helps this channel grow, um, I really appreciate it, I do weather content all, you know, throughout the whole year, so really do consider a subscription. Um, <clears throat> and all you have to do is have a YouTube account and it's free. So uh, thank you for doing so. Also, I'd, li I'd like to ask you guys one quick question. If you would like for me to make merchandise or any of that sort, <clears throat> uh, you know, if you are if you would uh, buy a shirt that if I would make, please leave it in the comment below. Um, say, you know, I would buy a shirt or not because I would just want to see how many people would, would want that. So let's get right into the video. <clears throat> so the first off, um, the, outlook, the factors are going to be the same as last video. I'll try keeping it short than the last uh, last video because that one was just a little bit too long but uh, you can see that my first one is the Enzo outlook El Nino La Nina etc then my second of four uh, second factor is a lot long range at models I didn't use that that much this time around I don't really calculate those too much into my final forecast due to the fact that they are uh, they just change too radically and they're usually not reliable analogs uh, I you know that's just one of the better things I, I use analogs pretty heavily um, because <clears throat> history can tell a lot about uh, you know about uh, this upcoming winter and this analogs are basically previous winters that have similar patterns in the sea surface and uh, the a lot of things similar and I just compare those winters to this year's winter and then finally my preliminary forecast so this is basically the historical La Nina and El Nino episodes based on the <clears throat> the ONI which basically is <clears throat> the ONI you can even see it says right there is and one measure of the El Nino southern oscillation <clears throat> and other indicate uh, underseas can perform or confirm whether features consist with basically what this means is it needs to be at least three months of an El Nino, of, or, or it needs to be at least three months of 0 0.5 and higher for there to be an El Nino, or zero, negative 0 0.5 or lower for it to be a La Nina off the Peruvian coast of South America. <clears throat> and right now, if I were to show you um, what we were looking at last time, this is what last time <clears throat> we were looking at. You can see updated 11th of July. <clears throat> so this was last year, uh, last uh, winter forecast. We were expected to go into a neutral pattern, but we were still in an El Nino. Now you could see Enzo updated August 8th, 2019. Uh, Enzo neutral is most likely to continue through the Northern Hemisphere winter 2019-2020. <clears throat> and this basically <clears throat> uh, shows us that the confidence has been increasing, but also... Uh, at least for the fall and early winter, later fall, or later winter, uh, things may go a little bit uh, askew or astray. Uh, we could be looking at maybe more of a La Nina pattern, <clears throat> possibly forming, but that is not, uh, you know, that's not really a realistic thing to ponder about at this point because it's just so far out. But at this point, it seems like a neutral is in place. You could see uh, this was last last time, uh, July 2019, my previous winter forecast. And <clears throat> this is what the models were showing, mostly a neutral. <clears throat> I mean, chances of an El Nino were still there, <clears throat> but uh, they were small. This time around, it's a little bit different graphic. I apologize. You could see updated 12th of July, uh, 12th of August 2019. You could see it was a, a El Nino. <clears throat> but then look, they're showing actually more, the models more, I think one or two, two, three are showing an El Nino <clears throat> out of like a hundred, I think. Um, this is, uh, <clears throat> this is a lot of models and you can see that, uh, yeah, the two are showing an El Nino and then there's a bunch that are showing a La Nino, but the majority <clears throat> are showing, uh, are showing a neutral. And you can see that's where the average line is, that little dashed line, that's where the average is. But you can see it awfully gets close <clears throat> around that December, January, February <clears throat> time frame. It gets awfully close to a La Nina. So we'll have to watch that because, you know, that could definitely come in play. And that's why I do think this could be a, a, a definite, <clears throat> a definite uh, you know, factor in 
of change when it comes to my later forecasts. So again, this was last year's or last winter forecast summary. You can see El Nino's present. Now, <clears throat> Enzo neutral conditions are officially present. So El Nino is no more. <clears throat> and this basically just gives us a probability of what it is to continue. You can see 50 to 55% chance for winter 2019. Um, it's fairly likely they'll continue through uh, fall but uh, 50 to 55 percent chance through the winter so it's a 50 50 with i'm assuming the other uh, like 45 being <clears throat> a possible la nina so uh it's actually higher now uh, that's one thing i wanted to point out this is what the sea surface temperatures looked like last time you could see july 17th this is recorded on august 17th so exactly a month ago <clears throat> a few things i want to point out is this was still considered being an El Nino. <clears throat> there was uh, the La Nina or the Enzo neutral conditions, sorry, were not as pronounced. The cooler waters were not as pronounced. And I also want you to focus on this part. You can see it was very warm up here and it still is very warm up here. <clears throat> and that is very important because if we were to look <clears throat> for these temperatures still staying warm during the winter, then this jet stream coming off of Asia would take a, 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 a ridge up into uh, Canada going around this warm temperature and then dive back down trying to regulate itself and possibly go back into Europe more uh, <clears throat> more into a zonal pattern but you can see that affects a good chunk of the country with cooler temperatures <clears throat> and that is because of those warm temperatures and you could see from the last month um, if I were to be able to do this from the last month not much change at all however notice how these colors of water got a little bit dark cooler here um, still though uh, it was last time it was already basically a neutral so uh, that's just, you know, it wasn't too much change in order to classify as a neutral. It was just when they basically updated it, it was already a neutral. And this is just Nino regions. I just wanted to include this because last year this was a big factor. Oh, my winter forecast. Um, <clears throat> last year we, we were looking at uh, monitoring closely this region, the Nino, the eastern part of the Nino, the western part of the Nino 4 region, and <clears throat> the Nino 1 plus 2 region because these were a little bit cooler and, and these were warmer, so that basically left us with an El Nino, a possibility of an El Nino Modoki <clears throat> or Modokai, and uh, that could have influenced it much more. But this year it seems like if this won't really play that much of a factor, so it's not much to pay attention to. This is what a La Nina pattern looks like. So I wanted to include this in <clears throat> uh, because it could be like that one, you know, especially towards the latter part of winter, it could be the dominating pattern possibly. And I'm not saying it will at this point, I'm just saying it's a possibility. But you could see, again, that blocking high pressure, those warm, basically what I drew out, and then you could see <clears throat> it brings cold temperatures, especially for the west and the northwest. And that's why I think <clears throat> that the northwest will be the hardest part to uh, nail down. I think, you know, the southwest... <clears throat> Yeah, I'm fairly confident it will be warmer and drier. Uh, maybe not drier, but just warmer. I think I'm fairly confident on that. Uh, the south, I think it will be wetter and cooler. I'm not too sure about that warm. That you know that could be intermixed with a little bit of cool. But the northwest, um, you know that's iffy because if you were to, I think I have a picture of a neutral pattern here. Oh uh, yeah, if we were to compare it to a neutral pattern, you could see. <clears throat> Um, which we are expected to go into, it's pushed more off to the east, this cold air, and it's affecting more of this part of the country. And you can see the south is wetter, mixed over with warmer, but also some of these cooler shots could definitely get in here and affect some of those locations. And you can see <clears throat> the southwest still remains rather warm. It's just that northwest is probably the most variable region. And also, I mean, if you were to look at the northeast here, even with the lining up pattern, the northeast <clears throat> would probably still get in on some of this cold. It's just more standard across the west. But with the neutral, I mean, the, the west could go from being warm to cold. And then the northeast would rather go from being possibly cold to cold. So you could see why the northwest has a bigger uh, variant. Uh, this is basically where the analog part of my forecast comes in. <clears throat> this is, uh, I'll explain this, why I'm using, I used the same analog on my previous winter forecast. And I just decided to stick with it because it's the one that is, uh, <clears throat> that already happened. And we already, so basically what I'm trying to explain here is March through May of this year were cool. And 2019 you could see March through May that you could see there was a cool chunk <laughs> across much of the country and the only location that was slightly warmer was the south and the southeast and parts of the extreme northwest and that's about it. So most of the country was pretty cool. Now what I wanted to do here was compare previous springs that were similar to this of March and through May <laughs> 2019 and compare their winters that followed. 
winters to this year winters or you know what may happen this year and notice also i want to point out before i show you the next slide that this these anomalies are actually fairly significant um you can see that this is <clears throat> negative one negative two negative three is at the purple and uh, that that right there is negative three degrees, and and when I show you this one month by month, you could see March was very chilly, April not that cold, um, warm, but then May was pretty darn chilly. As when I look at some of these anomalies, it was negative four across some of these locations, and I wanted to point it out because if we show you the previous springs that I found that were cold, this may look a lot colder than it was this year, but it's actually not. You could see the dark purple is negative one point five, whereas on this thing negative 1.5 was in that blue here so it's uh, adjusted to all these years but uh it, it, basically what i found is from all these years that had similar springs like we did this year you could see um november was looking like this and you can still see it's all the same 2018 2014 november or this was march through may uh how that translated to the november of that very same year you could see it was pretty chilly as well for a really good portion of the country i'll say the eastern three-fourths of the country Eastern four fits actually, <laughs> if I were to really uh, specify. And this is what December looked like. You could see it was warmer for a lot of the country. Um, maybe not most, <clears throat> but I think it will be similar last uh, this December to last year's December, where you know November was cold. <clears throat> December was a little bit warm. It was actually very warm across the country. And then January, you could see it got cooler. Um, not terribly too cold, but you know not warmer. And then notice how the years changed to 2019, 2015, because it's obviously January of the next year, fall of next year compared to the spring that happened last year. And you can see February was very cold. And I think I have, no, I don't, but I have November through March 2019. You can see that's what the winter averaged out to. So this is what when typical winters look like when a spring was chilly. And you could see that, um, you know, this year's spring was chilly as well. So that's a pretty big factor as well. Uh, there's several more analogs. <laughs> there's actually plenty of analogs that were uh, still calculated into this forecast, but I did not show due to the length being already long. And this is basically the Jamstack model. This was part of the long range factor. You could see they're showing actually warmer conditions across like much of the country. <clears throat> but uh, again, the Jamstack uh, hasn't been really awfully too reliable in my sense. I usually don't like looking at long range models since it's basically just like a coin toss, 50-50. <clears throat> and you most of the time they're wrong so so in that sense it's not a coin toss but you know what i mean and you can see that they're still showing slightly uh less warm temperatures across the eastern coast rather than the west even though it's still above average across the east so um i, you know, I don't really like this one but you know whatever i wanted to show it to you so you wouldn't complain <laughs> Uh, so this is my uh, temperature outlook for the uh, winter and the major difference from last year's or from last winter's forecast is that uh, I shifted <clears throat> the cold uh, a little bit to the east. So I think it was extending last time over here and I extended it more to the east due to being a more of a neutral pattern or you know the confidence in a neutral has grown. Um, However, this could also shift back further, you know, in my final winter forecast, possibly like in November, when um, possibly the La Nina will, uh, when the La Nina will, uh, you know, form possibly and maybe put some of the cooler temperatures across the Northwest. I put the Northwest as of now in warm because of the neutral, but that is, uh, I think, mainly, uh, you know, that could definitely change. That's like mainly one location that's like, this could be a completely whole different look, but as of now, I think the Southwest will be warm. Same with parts of the South, Southwest, you know, like Texas, <clears throat> mainly the South. And then uh, you can see cooler, slightly cooler, or slightly cooler, cooler, cold, and coldest across the Midwest and Plains. I think this location will get several Arctic blasts throughout the winter. We'll just get hammered. And then here we have equal chances. Uh, this basically could go either way. It could be cooler, could be warmer. <clears throat> and I think it could be warmer, especially as we go uh further down to the south and the east but uh, up here in the northwest again i think that may be cooler if we click now for my final winter outlook uh, this is what i think will look like i think again the worst of cold will be across the midwest many clippers for parts of the plains upper plains <clears throat> the, through the midwest and into the northeast and some of these clippers with the wet and warm conditions from the south could evolve into big nor'easters that's why i put this all in blue here's the winter battle zone <clears throat> depending on the storm and the system setup i think there could be several big snows across this area uh maybe uh even as far south as you know 
parts of the green area. But here, just wet and warm. Uh, I put a question mark behind the warm because <clears throat> I that's a big question mark. I, I think it'll be wet. I just don't know if it'll be warm. Uh, I, it looks as if it will at this point, but it's, I'm less confident about that than these other ones up here. Uh, I think it could be cooler, you know, several times for several periods of the year, or several periods throughout the winter. And then here is average, or, or basically, uh, again, you know, could be cooler, could be warmer, uh, could be snowier, could be less snowier. Just depends on the uh, setup with the La Nina neutral and the other analogs. Here, I just did slightly warmer, warmer and wet. I don't think the south or the southwest will necessarily be, <clears throat> necessarily be, uh, you know, uh, dry though it it's really hard to predict because the southwest has been um historically hard for me to predict and for many other people it's just been hard to nail down i do think it'll be warmer but maybe not necessarily uh drier but we'll have to wait and see about that but it's not you know that's not detrimental since the southwest has been ba they basically eradicated their drought at, uh, drought at this point so um they're not you know really looking for that water i mean the reservoirs are overflowing in fact so that's basically it. That was my final uh, winter forecast or my f my highlights and my second winter forecast. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. Um, I will be making more in the future. So consider subscribing. Consider liking the video. I'll catch you all guys on the next episode. See ya. Bye.